Hi, this is just a little bit of a research project really. I've never had two identical synths next to each other at the same time. So what is the difference between two identical synths? It might sound like a strange question, but when you're doing these comparisons that I do, and you've got two similar synths like, um, I don't know, like the Pro One from Behringer and the original Sequential Pro One, they're based on the same circuitry, one's like a clone of the other, and there are minor, minor differences here and there. And you've got to wonder, if I had two new Pro Ones, would they have minor differences? Because they are analog, they're based on sort of analog circuitry and there's lots of lots of components in there with minor tolerances that could be slightly different is that audible obviously after 40 years they will be so my pro one versus pro one <laughs> analogy doesn't really stack up but something like my behringer model d versus the mini moog um, recreation from 2014 2015 whenever it was put those next to each other they're two new versions of a mini moog now what do you expect them to be identical obviously maybe not again there because you've got two synths with different components ones based on the older components and obviously the the Behringer has got much more a, a modern manufacturing process involved in making the whole thing so it's got smaller components surface mounted and the rest but two things that have been built in the same factory with the same components but have the same tolerances which means that you, you will get slight variations in the electronics in both of them. Will that be audible? I've no idea, but it would be interesting to find out if they are. Because when I'm being really picky and people like comment on some of the videos, I'm being really, really picky about some of the minor, minor differences between things. Would that stack up against two identical units? I don't know, so let's find out. So thanks again for mrwiggly.co.uk. That's Dominic for lending me this one, while this one, which is my own, hadn't arrived. And when I did the video of, of this one versus the black and orange, this one <laughs> arrived as I was making the video. So quite interesting to have them together. And yeah, let's, uh, let's just kick off, shall we? So we start off by looking at the oscillators. I've got them all tuned as perfectly as I can. Obviously, if you've ever tuned anything like this, you can't get it to within zero cents. But here we go. Let's try a sawtooth on VCO3, shall we? And as you can see here, like in my previous comparison of the blue Marvin versus the black and orange, this half of the keyboard is playing this synth and this half of the keyboard is playing this synth. Now, I often hear it's sort of a dee da do da or something like that. Very, very minor differences. Am I hearing them there? I think I am. Very slight. So is that to do with tuning or is it to do with the oscillators? So, almost identical, they're both topping out there at the 6 kilohertz mark on, which one is it, is it the left hand one? No, on the right hand one we're getting a few more harmonics in there, there's a little bit more activity with those sort of squiggly lines, isn't there? But they do sound very similar, as you would expect, but there are differences if I've tuned them identically, let's look at that. There you go, this one's absolutely spot on. And yet, yeah, everything looks identical. I don't know why I'm so surprised. I always expect to find some little differences. <laughs> Ridiculous commenting on two identical synths. But uh, this one, actually, the right hand one, is a bit louder. And I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I've had to turn this one down a little bit just because the output's a little bit hotter and it sounds a little bit brighter. I've been playing with them for the last hour or two just to get a feel and they, they are the same. I've not really gone into the filters in too much detail yet, but obviously while I'm setting them up, tuning them and listening to them and trying to get a pulse as a square and stuff like that, I'm listening. But yeah, this one is a little bit, bit louder and if I just put it on full volume, let's turn this one up. 
So it's, it's considerable. And if we look at the focus right control, you can see that there's a fair difference. So I'm right in thinking that they're not gonna be absolutely identical. Let's turn it down again. So there we go. To start off with, one's a bit louder. Um, let's try a square on oscillator one. So nice to have them laid out the same. Normally when I'm doing a comparison, I'm looking for one oscillator in one place on one synth and in another on another. So this makes things very easy. And you can see there, that's a really nice square wave. We're not getting those intermittent harmonics you get when it's sort of wavers off being exactly 50%, although it was quite difficult to dial in. And I'll show you that in a minute. They're the same. And let's look at the frequency analysis just quickly. Not a lot to show off there. There's a couple of the little intermittent harmonics popping up on the left hand one. But not really. And I'll just dial that out for a second to show you what I mean when I say it's quite difficult to get them spot on. This one seems to have additional harmonics around the 600 mark that this one doesn't have, which is weird. That's really peculiar, but you know, it's a difference, I suppose. Gotta say, this is the epitome or the very apex of doing a comparison, isn't it? Comparing two identical synths just feel a bit mad, but there is a purpose to it. So I'm trying now to get this onto 50%. And you can see there, I've tried to dial it down and those intermittent harmonics just almost got to zero, but I nudged it probably less than half a millimeter and they moved back up again. And I'm really not even putting any pressure on it, just touching it. And there we go, we've got it. And again, it really is, it's quite hard to describe how much or how little you've got to touch them. I found that with the Pro One. At one point, I thought you couldn't actually get a square out of it. And just for the hell of it, should we have a listen to the triangle and the saw? Sounds the same, although the frequency analysis is showing slight differences. And on the oscilloscope, one's a little bit more rounded than the other. But it does show that there are minor differences, so I'm not as crackers as I could be. When I start doing this with two virtual analogs, please someone just shoot me. <laughs> Again, slight differences, little variations there on the frequency analysis. So I suppose I'm a little bit relieved that there are some minor differences because you would expect them to be there, but they're so insignificant. So it's exactly what you'd expect, insignificant differences between a couple of identical synths. Let's move over to the filter then. So Sawtooth on VCO3. So let's go for the same over here. Mm -hmm. 
So the resonances are exactly the same. No tracking. Let's bring in the oscillator as well. To hear what it sort of does when it plays along with that. So minor differences. Now they're, they're the same, aren't they? Just this one note here. And that's a very, very, very minor difference in tuning on the resonance. There you go. Again, it's gone out and I'm, I'm laboring this point a little just to show that they do actually do slightly different things and that's because they're analog and I'm quite pleased as well that they're not completely different because that sort of negates every single comparison I ever do wouldn't it if two identical synths don't sound anywhere near the same. What hope have you got when you're comparing um, a soft synth to the hardware, for example? Okay, let's move that over to the 4072. Hmm? So this one is a little bit higher. So you've got to retune them. So that'll be to do with the calibration of the filters themselves, won't it? Quite difference there. Let's turn the oscillators off. So, which one's right? Are they both right? Are they both within tolerance? That's about as close as I'm going to get them. Let's bring in an oscillator again. They sound the same, don't they? Let's just have a listen without any resonance. Just turn the filter up completely open. Um. Looks to me on those frequency analysis like the, uh, the right hand one is a little bit brighter. And if you listen, you can hear. There's a little bit more of a buzz on this one. Very, very slight, but it is there, and it wasn't there with the other filter. So the top of that note there is just touching that 10 kilohertz. And this one's around nine. So a difference again. Now I wonder if this was a soft synth and this was the hardware, People in the comments will be saying, they're completely different, tell you they're different, it's much brighter this one, I don't know. I'd hope anyone watching this would understand the minor, minor variations. But it is there. Okay, let's bring in a second oscillator, so we just... Now these have all been tuned exactly, you've seen me doing it, you've seen me making that into a perfect square on both of them. Now, they sounded the same when this was down here. We'll bring this one up. So, the only real differences I've found so far are in sort of levels. Let's check it out with just... It might just be one of these oscillators is a bit louder than on the others. So let's just try oscillator one. Yeah, so oscillator one on this, I'm not saying it's louder than that one because I've turned this one down. Maybe the oscillator three on this one is just a bit louder. 
Not that it changes the overall tone in any way, obviously, but it does show that, again, discrepancies can creep in. Let's do, uh, let's do an interval. So there's nothing there to suggest that they sound any any different to each other, is there? But if it was a comparison between two different synths, Let's try a little bit of frequency modulation on the filter then. I've tuned the cutoff so they're the same and I've put the resonance on maximum. So there's a very, very, very slight difference in tuning. You can hear that slow beating. Let's try the other filter. So this has gone down on uh, the right hand one. There's a much bigger difference on this one than there is on this one. And as far as I remember with the black and orange one, it was more like this. So maybe, maybe this one's not quite calibrated um, as accurately as that one, or maybe it's all within tolerance, I don't know. And they're both doing that thing where you push it to the maximum resonance and the cutoff actually drops a little. Uh, but let's put them back on the 4072 because they're tuned on that one. And let's modulate the filter with VCO2. Again, slightly different. So there are differences there in the amount of modulation. The tuning of the VCO2 should be exact. Just turn it up. Yeah, there you go. Again, very, very slight beat in there, but it does make it interesting when you're doing FM and I can get it really close on some things. And I've done it really close on a couple of soft synths. Closer than this. So when you tune them, they're identical, but the amount of modulation is different because if I whack this one to full, there's just a different amount in there. So. So the only real difference we've noticed, I suppose, is that the VCAs are slightly different. They pump out slightly different levels. On this one, we're getting a higher level from the main out than we are on the one on the left. Uh, is it the main out or is it potentially just that VCO3? I think it's the main out because everything else seems level. And you're getting a louder, was it a louder VCO1 or VCO2 on this one? And you're getting a little bit more modulation. I think it's more on this, the one on the right than the one on the left. I can't really work it out. So 
they're set as identical as I can get them. And the one on the right, I can take it up a bit higher. All the way to there. So it feels like I'm pushing that one a little bit further. So there we go. There are minor differences between the very same analog synth, and it's what we all sort of know and suspect, and that's why we like analog synths. The differences aren't as great as they are on the two different units on the blue versus the black and orange, although they were really, really similar, but not as similar as this. And I've got to say, I think my, <laughs> I think my Juno 106 versus the Model 84 from Softube was closer than, <laughs> than these two are actually, which is uh, surprising. Uh, I suppose that's one's DCO, isn't it? But anyway, I hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere. It was probably of more use to me than anyone else, just so when I'm comparing things, I know when it's wrong and when it's right, and I've got a reference point now with two identical analog synths. So if you enjoyed that, please think about subscribing and maybe join me over on the Patreon channel where I've got loads of tutorials going into how to get the most out of your synths. And I will see you next time.